Dia de los Muertos celebration. My name is Laurel Leeford, and you are with the Namaqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation. We are a congregation that is warm and generous and justice loving, a community of seekers. I use the pronouns she, her, and hers. And Namaqua is an intentionally inclusive church that believes all people are worthy of love. Todos son bienvenidos aquí. You are welcome here. We welcome and celebrate people of all ages, religious backgrounds, spiritual beliefs, cultural origins, differing abilities, gender identities, sexual orientations, economic realities, levels of education, and immigration statuses. Todos son bienvenidos aquí. All are welcome here. So this morning, we're continuing the Namaqua tradition of this year of kind of early celebration of Dia de los Muertos. As Jesse Hamlin wrote in an article called Lively Dead in the San Francisco Chronicle, what color is death? In European cultures, it's usually grim reaper black. But in Mexico, death dresses up in the blazing reds, blues, and yellows of life. In Mexico, death and life exist together. Rather than fear death, we prefer to face it, laugh at it, and celebrate it. As we continue our virtual Sunday services, remember that this service is being recorded and it will be posted on the Namaqua website. Chad Escalier, our Zoomer today, who by the way, had a birthday yesterday, happy belated birthday to Chad. So he will keep your microphones muted and this is good for the overall sound quality. And you'll have an opportunity to unmute during Joys, Joys and Sorrows and during our creation of a virtual um, altar. And then after the service in our virtual coffee hour. So I wonder if we have any visitors today I know that Kelly Evans is here from Neighbor to Neighbor. Thank you, Kelly. We look forward to hearing from you later. If there's anyone else you wanna raise your hand and we can give you, if we were in our sanctuary, we'd give you a round of applause, represent a welcome. But if anyone feels like introducing yourself, please unmute your mic and you can tell us your name. I don't see any people stepping up. But anyway, if you are a visitor, you may remain anonymous, but if you'd like to talk to me or if you'd like to get more information about the Namaqua congregation, please put your contact information in the chat room. So welcome one and all. And now Elizabeth Frazier, our worship associate who's helping with the service today, will read our call to worship chalice lighting words. We light this flame as our fervent plea to brighten the dark corners of our hearts. We hold this flame, for in it is the promise of warmth for souls grown cold in loss and despair. We kindle this light that we might continue to find comfort in its warmth, strength in its light, holiness in its presence. We follow this light that it might illuminate our search for purpose, for meaning, and forgiveness. We light this chalice knowing even as the sacred sparks of the lives of those we have known and loved are extinguished in the ensuing darkness, their lights will still burn bright with all the memory and hope of their all too brief flash across our lives. We light this flame of life, of love and truth for the divine promise of healing hearts. Now, if you'll join me in the congregational affirmation. Love is the spirit of this church and service its call. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth and love and to help one another. Our opening hymn is one that we have heard a fair amount recently, but it's one of, I think, our favorites, it's certainly one of mine, and very apt for today. It was written by Issei Barnwell, a member of Sweet Honey in the Rock, and it's called We Are. We are our grandmother's prayers. We are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors and the spirit of God.
For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who Now I'd like to read a moving meditation for Dia de los Muertos. As we begin to settle to a deeper, more inward place, to be fully present right now in this place made for a head and heart together, we might begin to feel how our own bodies are not only flesh and blood, but skeleton bones as well. No matter how old we are, no matter how we move from place to place, we humans are skeletal beings. I invite those of you who would like and who can to stand during this embodied meditation. I welcome you all to this embodied meditation. First, as we make ourselves consciously comfortable, let us feel the various parts of our bodies. Beginning from the top of our heads, the skull inside, feeling our cheekbones, the teeth within our mouth, the opening and closing of our jaw, moving to our shoulders, our clavicle, scapula. Now feeling how our breathing expands and contracts our ribs. As we can, arms go wide and big all the way down to, your phal to our phalanges, out and back down. Now legs, consider your femur, your thigh bone. Those folks sitting, move their femur if you can. One at a time, up and down. Those of you standing, lift your skeleton leg up and down, up and down. Toes, imagine bones inside our toes. Wiggle them if you can. 
Feel the movement and stillness of bones of the pieces of your bodies. The calacas, calaveras, skeleton bones, skeleton bodies of those living and dead, not so different. Remind us that we too are mortal and are connected by the love that shines through our lives. Let our breath connect us with the loved ones gone before us. Listen. Amen. Thank you, Elizabeth and Reverend Katie Kandarian who composed that meditation. So today, along with many of other sibling Unitarian Universalist congregations, either this weekend or next weekend, we celebrate Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead in English, Dia de los Muertos in Spanish. Dia de los Muertos is a holiday that is celebrated in Mexico, and it's also become popular here in the United States. As always, when UU congregations like Namaqua include spiritual rituals and holidays borrowed from other traditions, we do so with respect. Over the years, this simple ceremony of remembrance connects us with those who we have loved and lost, and also it connects us to one another. Our purpose today is to honor and remember our loved ones who have died. And so it's a mixed ritual. It's both happy and sad. It's sad because we miss them, but it's happy because we remember them and we're together. So in this, it mixes grief with celebration. Our ritual here and yesterday for some of us is relatively modest and plain compared with the Mexican observances of the holiday, as you'll see in our time for all ages. Many people who celebrate Dia de los Muertos in Mexico believe that the gates of heaven are opened at midnight on October 31st, and the spirits of all the children who have died, the angelitos, are allowed to reunite, reunite with their families and be with them for 24 hours. And then on November 2nd, the spirits of the adults come down to enjoy the festivities that are prepared for them. People create beautiful altars in their homes, decorating them with candles and buckets of flowers and stacks of tortilla and bread called pan de muertos. Toys and candies are left for the children and there's food and drink for the hungry, weary spirits who have come to be with their families on this special occasion. At the markets, people buy little skeletons and sugar skulls to put on the altar. And then on the afternoon of November 2nd, the people take the celebration to the cemetery where the people who have died are buried. And the families clean the graves and play cards and listen to music while they tell stories about their loved ones. They believe that the happy spirits of the people who have died will protect their families and bring them good luck and wisdom. And so let's get a taste of this with our story, which is Dia de los Muertos at Lake Pazcuaro. El simplazúchil es una flor que representa el rayo del sol en nuestras casas, habitaciones, a veces ponemos en el piso por la puerta de la entrada flores simplazúchil para que los difuntos lleguen, lleguen al altar a levantar esa ofrenda que se les ofrece. The simplazúchil is a flower that represents In our houses we put it on the floor near the door so that the dead find their way to the offered altar. El Día de Muertos es para muchas personas lo lo ven como un 
una fiesta, una fiesta a sus fieles difuntos. Most people, the day of the dead pues is a celebration. Es importante. Le da el, el color a lo que es noche de muertos para que le dé que le dé luz, que le dé vida. And the flower is very important. It gives light and love to the party. Todas las personas les ponen su ofrenda, su altar en sus casas, los adornan con flores, con plasmuche, les ponen pan de muerto. Eh, se le pone fruta, un vaso de agua, sal, la sal para la bendición de los alimentos, el agua para tomar, porque pues vienen desde lejos y vienen con mucha sed. All the people put their offerings in their houses, flowers, they offer bread, fruit, a glass of water, salt for the food blessing. The water for thirst because they come along with mucho tomar. Y ya cuando mi mamá pone el altar, le pone un vasito. My grandfather loved tequila, so my mom pours him a little glass. la noche pues se va a lo que es la velación en el panteón toda la noche se les adorna su, su, su tumba se les ponen sus flores la gente se queda ahí toda la noche velando pues. the night we go to the graveyard the whole night we decorate the tomb we put up flowers the people stay over all night and we wait for them. Significa que pues nos queremos, los esperamos y los esperamos con flores, velas y la comida. Y eso es lo que les ofrecemos a los difuntitos. We wait for them with flowers, candles, and food. And that's what we offer to our dead. Cuando nosotros fuimos chicos, así veíamos a nuestros papás. Y los papás, a los papás de ellos, a los abuelos. Y nosotros los seguimos conservando. Dice uno, pues si mi papá viviera, si mi mamá estuviera, pues otra cosa sería. You know, when you say if dad was alive, if mom was alive, how different things would be. How different things would be. But we are alive. And we who are alive have lives of joy and sorrow, and we share our joys and sorrows with one another as we weave the tapestry of love we call community. So again, I want to wish Chad a happy birthday. Also, uh, Barbara Fleming, thank you so much for recommending me to be a participant in the series of speakers for Living Her Legacy. I did that yesterday, and it is on the YouTube of Living Her Legacy. So thank you to our historian and Fort Collins expert, Barbara Fleming. So now I'd like to invite any of you who have joys or sorrows to either put them in the chat box or raise your hand and then unmute your microphone and share with us. So we'll start with you, Fran. Unmute, unmute. Wait, wait, wait. Unmute, friend. There we go. Um, okay. On Thursday, I will be 77. And Bob and I have decided we're now elderly. We used to just be old, but 
we're elderly now. He's a little bit <laughs> behind me. He'll have a few more months of being old, but I am now elderly. So Okay. Quite an elderly you are. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday to you, Fran. And we'll call on Susan. Susan Moody. Hi. Um, yeah, I have a worry. My son is um, on his way to Brazil with his girlfriend who's from Brazil and is Japanese. So they're on a wonderful adventure and, and he said, don't worry. And I said, moms always worry. <laughs> we try not to, but we do. But so I'll keep them in your thoughts. I'm, I'm sure they're just gonna have a wonderful time and no problems. Thank you. <laughs> well, we'll share your concern. And calling on Kathy Hartman first and then Donna Brown. Well, as many of you know, my mom passed away on Thursday. She had um, the COVID virus. My sister was able to be with her. And so it was probably as peaceful as possible. But I thank you all for your good wishes and your condolences and the many plants and flowers. Thank you. Yeah, we're with you, Kathy. And Donna? Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Am I on? Can you see me? Yes. Yes? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're all honoring our dead, but today is especially poignant for Jed, my husband, because three years ago today, here's his mother and I, uh, his mom passed away exactly today. So oh. we're a little extra tender today about that. And um, But the joy of it is she lived to be 91. Wow. Great lady. Tell Jed we love him and give him okay. condolences. Thank you. And we had uh, Janet Gillette type in that Sid is having her minister. Sid is having her minister over for tea on Tuesday. And she asked me to lift that up as a joy today. And Pete and Jen said that Pete's brother and niece are on the far side of the kidney transplant now, home from the hospital brother on a journey to in, avoid the rejection of his new kidney. So. And anyone else? Oh, let's see. So there's Sid, who sends her sympathy to Kathy for the loss of her mom. If there's anyone else, I can't see your hands. Please help me out. So Mim Neal, and there's Sid. So Mim, unmute. May I speak, Laurel? Sure, but Mim, okay. All right, Sid, go first. I'm so sorry. You know how I am with technology. I apologize, everyone. No I just problem. Want, I want to get the word out nationally because this is very important and we're Unitarians. We're having a big bloom of COVID right now here in Waterloo and the authorities are not acting on it so that they don't frighten us. But what we're frightened of is the authorities not working on it. So all I'm asking my congregation to do is to please reach out to all of the Unitarians you know in the Midwest and give them love because right now everybody I know is in quarantine in my two cities in all wow. of my and I won't be able to work now for several months other than right. So just please uh, pass that along. That's all I wanted to say is everybody be careful and, and be smart. And Waterloo is in Iowa. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yep. All immigrants and people of color. Okay. Thank you, Sid. You bet. And Mim? You're still muted, Mim. Mim? Okay. Wait, 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 there you go. All I want to do is say that Aiden Christensen and his father, Way, and our heroes for little old ladies who need help in their yard, and uh, Katie Fox is, is organizing some rescue troops for later in case I may need them, which I will. Anyway, they are wonderful human beings, and I'm very grateful they're in my, in my life. And we're grateful they're in our congregation, too, and you, too. So 
So thank you to Wei and Aiden Christensen for helping that beautiful little old lady, Min Neal. I wonder if you're elderly yet. yet. Oh, I'm so far ahead of them. <laughs> I've been elderly a long time. Right, we got lots of wisdom in this congregation. So anybody else? Tim, did you want to say something? And then Sherry. So I'm I'm grieving for Rocky Mountain National Park, such a beautiful place, and it's just it just really saddens me to see how much it's burning up. Plus, plus I'm grieving for the people in Grand Lake, so many of whom have lost their homes. That's that's where my heart. That's where I'm grieving. Yeah, I think all of us join you in our grief for the destruction of Rocky Mountain National Park and of the people who have lost their homes. And I think one, two people have lost their lives there. Yeah, our hearts just go out. I, I don't know if you've made some donations, but that's one way we can help. Plus, we've got people in our congregation offering housing for people who have been evacuated. So... Thank you, everyone, for your concern. And Tim, I see you, so you're unmuted. I'm unmuted now. I just want to I have a joy. This is a mask that Kathy Hartman made for me, and it has guitars and all sorts of musical instruments on both sides. <laughs> Kathy Hartman. She's got her mask ministry, <laughs> so thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Tim. Anybody else? Well, I'll put in, oh, Trish, you wanna say something? I just wanna do a snow dance. I love the snow. I grew up with piles of it. So it's in me, but this is special. This is really important. So I hope we get a huge dump. Here's the snow dances and- yes. That will help repress and it's entertaining my kitty as it comes down this morning. <laughs> and Kathy Hartman has one more thing. Thank you, Trish. Sorry, um, I just wanted to say I was working at the food bank the other day volunteering and they run out of diapers and feminine hygiene products regularly. And so when they get money, they tend to buy food. So I just thought if anybody is out shopping and they can pick up any of those supplies. You can drop them at my house and I'm gonna be volunteering there on a regular basis. I'll just take them with me. They'll take money too, but um, it's just clear that those are things that are lower on the list and they run out really regularly. So I'll just throw that out there. Okay. Well, thank you, Kathy. So I'll put in a few more to represent the joys and sorrows that might be in your hearts if you feel too shy or tender to speak of them. And also we have lit on our altar. I don't know if you can see it, but it's the candles that represent the joys and sorrows beyond our walls. So we are always aware that the world that we are all connected to has joys and sorrows that won't be spoken in our service, but we send out our comfort to those who are grieving and we celebrate with those who have joy. Last week, I started what may be a tradition, which is we'll close this part by me saying, in our joy and in our sorrow, and then you, the people, say, we are not alone. In our joy and in our sorrow, we are not alone. Thank you. So now, Kelly, Kelly Evans is here from Neighbor to Neighbor has been really busy in this COVID time. And Kelly, I can't present you physically with the check, but I will present you virtually with it and then mail it to your Fort Collins office. And so here's the check to Neighbor to Neighbor. They were our half plate recipient this last quarter. And so Kelly will be sending you a check for $921.16. I'm not sure how the 16 cents came, but 
And would you please share with us, well, first of all, accept our thanks for your work and let us know how that the donation will be used. Thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity and thoughtfulness and time today to share back a little bit with you um, about how we're going to put this check to good use. So as you may remember, we um, provide housing stability across the continuum from homelessness prevention to home ownership and even some reverse mortgage consultation and some other things. And it is our eviction prevention program that has really been busy and been needing a lot of community support. Um, the most exciting part, um, in addition to the evictions that have been pre prevented, is that during the pandemic, we have received 830 individual donations. So it's really groups, small groups are counted in that 830 number coming together for neighbors to support neighbors. And the result of that outpouring has been that we have prevented 2000 evictions so far during the pandemic. And those are households that are receiving $700 is our average um, per disbursement, um, which is double what our pre-pandemic um, check amount would have been our, our pre pandemic average. So we're serving a lot more people, but we're also giving a lot more people twice as much money. Um, because what used to fill a gap before the pandemic economic crisis just doesn't um, cut it anymore. So we are extremely grateful for neighbors taking a little bit that they have and and passing it forward just through our gate. Um, we have had to hire more staff to run this high level of service, um, but thankfully we have also received grants that pay for them. So we really are able to leverage um, the donated dollar about four times, thanks to the grants and the state partnerships that we have um, established. So I let you know about just the number of community supporters that you are among and that we have prevented 2000 evictions during the pandemic. And I also wanted to let you know the total that has been dispersed so far. In Loveland, specifically during the pandemic, we've distributed $300,000 to 500 households. So 500 households um, have prevented eviction in Loveland. And we, in total, we're serving Weld and Larimer counties, have distributed 1.5 million to 2000 households April through October so far. So I'll just close by sharing one um, of the many, many quotes we have received. If you're on our Facebook page, you're seeing them. Um, I don't know, maybe too often, but um, we just want to help share the voice of the people who are on the other end of, of these checks. Uh, Kristen says, I worked two jobs for the last two years. When COVID hit, I lost income and had a hard time keeping up with bills. I really had to take a hard look at my finances and my life as a single mom. I was so behind in bills and I was scared. I filled out the neighbor to neighbor rental assistance application online and within 24 hours had a counselor assigned to me. She made me feel I have worth and that it's okay to ask for help. Within one day, the late rent I owed was paid by neighbor to neighbor. My landlord called and said they appreciated how hard I worked for my family and that they were happy neighbor to neighbor was available to assist. I feel very humble and blessed to have this resource. Thank you God for being support and light in the darkness during this time in all of our lives. I'm truly grateful and feel like I can breathe again and sleep at night. Kristen, I wanted to pass that along to all of you. Thank you. Carl, I just want to say thank you myself. I've been a recipient of Neighbor to Neighbor's assistance. I did not have access to permanent housing, and you enabled me to get that. It was several years ago, but I just wanted to thank you. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. It is. It's, it's humbling and a blessing for us to be part of the project. You know, I call it a ministry that Neighbor to Neighbor has undertaken. 
and given such tangible as well as intangible support to the people of our community, including right here at home. So thank you so much, Kelly. And I'm really glad you could be with us today. Me too, thank you. Oh, thank you. And now we are in another quarter and we are donating half of our plate this quarter to Alternatives to Violence. So Alternatives to Violence provides shelter, advocacy, education, and resources to people who are impacted by domestic violence or sexual assault, human trafficking. And so in this time of greater isolation, those living with an abusive partner are at greater risk and may be harder to find. And so as with Neighbor to Neighbor, the agency's services of Alternatives to Violence are more important now than ever. They already have had 70% more applicants this year than at the same time last year. And they've filled all their available beds and are having to rent hotel rooms for the additional people who need safe housing. So Chad will put in your chat box, the donate link. And if you then will enjoy the music, one of our songs, Spirit of Life in both Spanish and English, please be generous. If we were in our sanctuary, the ushers would have passed these baskets around to accept your offerings, and then they would come up front and stand with me as we bless them. And so please repeat after me, even though your mic is muted. We dedicate ourselves, and these are our offerings, to the vision of this congregation, which is to radiate love, peace, and justice as together we work to build beloved community. Thank you. And before we turn to our main event, the heart of this service, um, I understand that Carl, you wanted to share, and I'm sorry I didn't see your hand, but do you wanna unmute now? Go ahead, you can unmute and share. <clears throat> I just want to mention that the Longmont Museum has a wonderful Day of the Dead exhibit. And if you can get out there, it's really worth going to. That's all. It's really good. Thank you. Yes, I've been to it and it is quite wonderful. 
So thanks. And again, my apologies, Carl, for not seeing. All right. So you can go ahead and mute again. Thank you. Well, one and all, you've probably noticed that the days are growing short, shorter. The nights are growing longer. And sometimes we feel a little bit nostalgic at a time like this. It's kind of amazing that we woke up to all this snow. Where I am right now, it's still coming down. We may have images of those who we have lost come to mind, people who graced our lives and now are no longer physically present with us. But we carry the way that they shaped who we are, what we value, the experiences that we had with them. And as I mentioned at the beginning, there's both joy and sadness. So this is kind of a poignant type of ritual. And I think it's important not to push the feelings away. Um, the fact that we are feeling grief for people we have lost means that we love them. It's the other side of grief, I mean, of love. And so our memories today, our ritual of remembrance will honor those who have gone before us. And so may their spirits live again in our tender thoughts of them and prove that death and distance and the mystery of what comes after this life are powerless to sever the bonds that still exist between us and connect our loving hearts with those who we have loved and lost. And so to begin our ritual of remembrance, yesterday there was a handful of us, there were was a handful of us who came together in the sanctuary. We built the altar the way that we have in years past with a beautiful multicolored tablecloth and symbols of the Day of the Dead. And so thank you to Jan and Wright, our Director of Religious Education for filming it and her son Dallin for putting it together. And so now let's witness what happened yesterday in our sanctuary in our ritual of remembrance. And then you all will have a chance to share as well. Uh, every year, I bring this picture of my parents, Lee and Lillian, my first loves. And then this year, I also brought these pictures from Nancy Kane and Don Cook's memorial service at Namaqua Park. And here is my sister Carolyn, who just died in February. And John Lewis at Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We will remember them. Father, and this is me wow. when we were each 20 years old. <laughs> a little family resemblance. Yeah, just a little. Wow. Very handsome. We will remember him, and of course we remember you. This is a picture of my parents, I think probably back in the 50s. Uh, my mom's name is Christine, and my dad's name is 
John and Jen. Uh, Steve and Jan. He, uh, he migrated, or he didn't migrate, he came in his family, to America in the 1930s. He was raised in Holland, and then his dad got a promotion, so the whole family moved to Jakarta. Really? Indonesia. Uh-huh. And then they, my parent, grandparents broke up and sent him away, and she took the family to Cincinnati. Huh. 1930s. My mother, on the other hand, her relatives came to America in the 1630s. Wow. Yeah. That's okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Thank you. you. This is my daughter, Michelle. I'm Jenna. This is Michelle. And this is Michelle and her daddy, Al Watson, mm -hmm. and her Willie. Oh. And he passed away since October 4th. Yeah. It's very fresh. Yeah. yeah. Fresh grief. Fresh grief. Oh yes, Nicole Gilbert. Oh yeah, she was going to come. Right, she's not going to make it, so she asked me to mention her grandparents, Babette and the Roy Gilbert. And that was were they her folks? And or? there's Babette. I think <clears throat> I think Roger is her dad, and Babette and Leroy are her grandparents. Oh, we will remember you. We will remember you. Shared an airplane with, with another uh, person, and would, on his his time off, he'd fly to Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, <laughs> to provide health care to that area. Uh -huh. um, he was a champion water skier. He built um, there, there was quite a water skiing group in Loveland back in those days on the lake, mm -hmm. and he built um, the ski jumps that they would use. And he set a national record when he was 35 uh, water skiing. And his son David was second in the, in, the, in the country in this kind of water skiing where they go around the... You know, oh, the, uh, uh -huh. like that slalom. Yeah, like slalom skiing. Um, so, uh, when he, re he retired, they moved to Mexico. He lived in San Miguel, Miende. And he and Angie uh, provided health care. They drove their trailer all the way down to Guatemala, if you can believe that. Yeah, you know, and during that time, there were, there were skirmishes going on. Mm -hmm. And they had to um, have an armed guards to take them from where they were staying to where they were providing health care. And one morning, Angie was looking off and all these military, I don't know which side they were on, were um, going through the forest, you know, with their guns and stuff. She went, this is typical of a comedic of Angie and Keith. Oh, gorillas in the mist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they were, they were oh these God. unflappable people. <laughs> but, um, and did he come back here? With they, would, they lived in San Miguel, and actually, they crossed the border back into the States, uh, basically, the after, it was like noon on 9 11. Oh my God. Angie had developed a serious problem with her health, and um, they just basically got back into the States before they closed the border. Oh my gosh. Um, it turned out it was cancer. Oh. Uh, so most of those have been to do with a lot of time. But uh, anyhow, they're, they are part of the Loveland lore. Yes. What a re renaissance man. Yeah, and, and Angie too. She was just incredible. So what we're saying is we will remember you. We remember yes. you.
Thank you to all of you who came. I wish we all could have been there. And Vicki, you're right. It is so wonderful to see the inside of, of our sanctuary. And we will be back there. Now I would like to invite anyone of you who are here, if you'd like to share, and you can say the names of the person that you would like to remember and honor. And if you have a photo or a memento of them, you can hold it up in front of your screen. And after each person shares, let's say together, we will remember them. So who would like to share? Kathy? So here's a picture of my mother. I hope you can see it. Uh, my mother was a um, great baker and a great flower gardener. She didn't like to cook so much. She pretty much put every meal in the pressure cooker, but boy, she could bake a loaf of bread. And then I have um, a picture that's really hard to see of my dad on a fire truck with Nathan. Um, my dad passed away 18 years ago tomorrow. He was a kind and generous human being. And I married a man, David, who was very much like my dad. <laughs> so there you have it. We all remember them. We will remember them. Thank you, Kathy. And you know, I'm finding that if you put your view on speaker view, then you can see the person speaking better. And so uh, right now I see you, Fran, raising your hand. Go ahead, unmute. Um, I just want to say three names of really dear friends who died in the past few months. Um, Diane Avery, Bob Schneider, and Charles Beck. Just full of memories of all three. Well, we will remember them. We will remember them. I want to remember my husband, Tom, who was one of the founders of Namaqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation, who founded the choir and <clears throat> had a beautiful deep bass voice and who made me very happy for 31 years. Yes. We will remember him. And we have, because of your generosity, Barbara, the Tom Fleming Fund. So we remember him as we pay guest musicians as well. Trish, I see that you have a photo up. Did you want to speak? This is my dad, Bob Murtha, who died a year ago, um, two days before his 93rd birthday. And this is a photo I it's fairly new copy of one that I have. And um, yeah, he's a, a person the world misses in many ways. And I'm so blessed. Yeah. We will remember him. Thank you. Peter? I just want to say, remember my parents, I don't know if you showed your picture earlier, my computer crashed right in the middle of that, so I didn't get to see it, but uh, that's all. I just want to say that. And we did hear the story of, of their coming to this country. So thank all you. Right. You recorded that? <laughs> we, we will remember them, and you can see the recording on our website if you feel like it. Right, I know. Glenda, and then Fred. This is a picture of Barb Fisher. Hmm. She was my friend for 33 years and my life partner for 25. Uh, she was exceptionally witty and a really hard worker for any cause that she undertook. Uh, living with Barbie was, uh, wasn't a laugh every minute, but it was a laugh every two or three hours. Uh, she kept us going, and what was so, one of the things that was 
incredible about our relationship was we never had an argument. What? Not once. Uh, we had made a pact that we would talk it out or laugh it out or live it out, but we wouldn't fight and we never did. She was a wonderful human being and she passed away on Mother's Day uh, of 2012. And I miss her every day. Thank you. Thank you, Glenda. We will remember her. And as with Tom Fleming, we also have a Barbara Fisher Memorial Fund. And when we get back into our uh, sanctuary, you'll see up in front, there are two TV screens that we will be able to project words to hymns on and show YouTube videos. And so thank you for um, Glenda for giving us a tangible way to remember your beloved. So thank you for that, Barbie. And Fred, unmute. These are my parents and uh could you hold it up higher a little bit higher there we go okay and um my father was a refugee from austria a jewish refugee and he met my mother who was salt of the earth kansas and they were a great team they died within six months of each other 30 years ago so i've been an orphan my brother and i were orphaned at age 40 and 43 and my brother just died, so I'm a sole survivor now. Well, we will remember them. Thank you, Fred. And Kent, I see you holding up a picture. You want to unmute and share? Unmute. There we go. Oh, they're okay. Um, this is a picture of my brother. Um, he was 10 years older than me. And uh, when he was born, he was expected not to live because he had a hole in his heart that uh, the um, old blood and the new blood would get mixed up. But my mother had a background uh, in nursing and she did everything to keep him well. And he went on to live of as normal a life as you can without exercising. And uh, he was 10 years older than me. Um, and he went on to uh, uh, work in uh, Denver and, and led a fairly independent life. Uh, he died uh, at the age of 26, but he was expected to die as a baby. And I consider my mother the person who helped to keep him going as normal as possible. I'm very grateful for Charles Robertson. Thank you, Kent. We will remember him and your mother who helped him. And Susan Moody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I forgot about this, so I found the best pictures I could. This is my mother and my father, Monty and Evelyn Montgomery. Um, and they died, dad died about 10 years ago and mom died about seven years ago. Mom died the same year that Steve died, my husband. Um, let me show you a picture of my dad too, really. <clears throat> I found he was a World War II B-17 pilot. So you can see him, he's a pretty handsome guy. <laughs> and I was a daddy's girl, so. I love that picture of him. Also, I have pictures. My husband was a, his name was Steve, and he was a debate coach. So you can see here he is at his desk speaking to students. And then every year we always had all the debaters over to our house. And so right in front of our house, this is a picture of my husband, his assistant coach, and our debate team. They were all like my kids and I still talk with them on Facebook all the time. <laughs> yeah, love them all, miss them all. Oh, that's a nice legacy. It's 
So we will remember them. Thank you. And Donna Brown. Thanks, I wasn't sure if I raised my hand right. <laughs> These are my parents, Irene and Charlie. Hold it, hold it uh, where your camera is. So let's see, there we go, turning. Okay. This is Irene and Charlie on their 50th wedding anniversary. And um, I'm a lot like my mother in, her th in my thinking and my uh, temperament. I think I channel her sometimes, <laughs> gets me in trouble sometimes. And then she had a great sense of humor. And this is uh, my dad, he played the violin beautifully. So any musicality I got, I got it from dad. So anyway, remembering him then today. So hold it up and I think turn it a little bit to your left, up and to your left. There we go. All right. Thank you, Donna. And so you blessed us with your piano playing. And so we owe that in part to your dad. Thank you. We will remember them. Thank you. I can't see if there's anyone else. If you want to unmute or help me out if someone can see a raised hand that I can't see. Mim? Mim, unmute, there you go. Um, I'm just holding a peace symbol from Nancy King's mm -hmm. memorial. And I remember her often. She was a gift to the community at large and our own community and person. Yeah, thank you for Holding up peace was her passion. So we will remember her and also her husband, Don. I guess this is one of those silver linings that by doing it on Zoom and adapting our ritual, we were able to speak. And typically when we would do this in our sanctuary, we would have music playing, but people would silently come up and put your photograph or memento on the altar. And so maybe when we go back into our sanctuary, we'll incorporate this part of sharing. So thank you to all of you who shared, and I'm sure that there are many more who we hold in our hearts. And let's just say together, we will remember you. Elizabeth and I will now do a responsive reading called, We Remember Them. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. We remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. We remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. We remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. We remember them. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. We remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. We remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. We remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. We remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. We remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are a part of us as we remember them. We remember them. 
that's our promise. And now to extinguish our chalice. As we extinguish this flame, may we pray. Spirit of life, whom we know best in our own loving and being loved, hold us as we remember those we have loved and those who have loved us. May our gratitude sparkle in our lives. May our tears lubricate our souls. Help us to know that we are not alone in our grieving and help us also to come to that peaceful place in which we can take what we learn from those who have gone before us into our own lives. Remember us that we too are mortal and that the only ensuring, enduring legacy we leave is the love that shines through our lives. Those who live before us have not disappeared. They're with us still. The lives they lived hold us steady. Their words as we remember them remind us and call us back to ourselves. Their courage and love evoke our own and we the living carry them with us. We are their voices, their hands and their hearts and we can remember them not just with sorrow, but also with joy. And so as we end our service today, let us remember with joy all the gifts that they gave us that are part of their legacy. So Chad, it's time for our closing song and thank you to Janin for finding it. It's called Spreading Love. is all around in the sky and in the ground in every single living thing and in the song that i'm singing there are children in the streets that have not a thing to eat yet their hearts are full of love they are beings from above loves everywhere you go all you have to do is open up your soul the love inside you grow and take every chance you get to spread the love everywhere can you feel it in the air it's spreading everywhere can you feel the love inside it's spreading worldwide with every step you take there's pleasure there is Take this magical feeling, spread it around from when the sun rises till the evening. Let it touch the heart of the soul that are grieving. Cause we rising and without you we ain't leaving. Love is a really special thing. Can't be replaced with anything, including diamond rings and rich wealthy kings. The offspring of a butterfly feels the love once it flies. Doesn't matter what your size, you'll feel the love inside. Now there's a thing called hate, and that's a classified mistake. There's only room for love today, so forget all the pain. Can you feel the love inside? It is spreading worldwide with every step you take. There is pleasure, there is pain, every. Being a 
love one at a time one at a time doesn't matter your race color or size color or size all i know is that when i look into realize. your eyes love is all i want to spread i realize i love you i say that truly from my heart because i know if i don't start now who knows when we'll depart i have faith that our love creates a spark that starts a flame that will erase all the dark yeah imagine that dark turn into light just because one of our hearts loosened up from its tight grip so it touched the next with all its joy and brightness and that's the story of how we ended this crisis So take that message out into the world. Let's share our love. And that's the way that we can honor our loved ones is to go out and love some more. The only announcement I have today is about next Sunday when Janet Gillette and I will have a service entitled People Have the Power. And as you know, November 1st is just a few days before our national election. And so we can hope for the best and no matter what, we'll be together. And so now, if you'd like to stick around for our virtual coffee hour, we'll have some breakout rooms that Chad will help us visit in a smaller group. Again, it's great to see you, Milo and Cora. And thank you all for being with us today with this ritual of remembrance.
Bye, everyone. Love y'all. Bye-bye. Have a good week, vote if you have.